Okay, thank you. Uh, this will be our last uh, talk of the day in the Legal and Policy Issues Dev Room. And our last speaker is Mark Hoffman. Yeah. Hi, welcome to my talk. Um, I had a bit of a difficulty preparing this talk because I don't know what the audience knows about Horizon and what they don't know. So if you have a question in between, just ask. And I will try to answer the question in between because I think um, maybe there is a, just some problems with comprehension or terms you won't know because it's e EU speak I use sometimes. So, at first, why this presentation? Um, I'm doing quite a lot of research and I'm doing it in my own company, but I've worked at universities, done my PhD, done postdocs, worked at, at different countries. And in all these countries, uh, people try to get funding for, uh, for the research, for the community <coughs> projects, and so on. Um, I'm also learning a lot about Horizon. It's a new project of the EU. Before that, there was a different program called FP7. And this year, Horizon started. Um, and I think free software could get more out of Horizon than they got out of the last program, FP7. There are quite some projects already um, using free software, but usually the free software project itself is not involved in the uh, EU process. So, what I'm doing now, I'm trying to write a book about how to get funding, and I want to share my knowledge and give back to the free software community. I will talk about what is Horizon 2020, that's the official name, how does it work? What can you expect if you get some money? And I must really say, it's an overview. I generalize and give some hints for free software. But there are always exceptions. It's a program which will last for seven years, thousands of pages of documentation, and there are quirks and rules and exceptions everywhere. Um, Horizon 2020 is the main project for the EU for science and technology. It lasts seven years from this year to 2020. So the name Horizon 2020. And the official goals are for the EU to stay globally competitive, and that's in terms of um, business mostly, and find solutions to problems of society. Um, unfortunately, that's very general and you can't actually do anything with these uh, goals practically. Um, the project is based on uh, research issues proposed by scientists and uh, agencies in all member countries. In principle, everybody could submit a proposal for Horizon 2020. In practice, only lobby groups do it. Uh, there's about uh, 70 billion euros of funding in the project over the seven years and the most projects require that you work together with different EU countries. So usually you can't say just um, I mark, I want to get some money and I work on myself. That usually doesn't work like this. Um, and the last point is quite important. The EU policy is based on intellectual property, on securing it, but also on spreading it. And that's a bit of a problem for, for some projects, because um, the EU wants companies to really build intellectual property and profit from it. And that's at all for the free software movement <coughs> and thoughts. Now, what are the funding areas? These, um, the... Um, uh, darker ones are funding areas where I think there is more potential for free software. Uh, the first one is health, demographic change and well-being. That's uh, basically medicine and everything around it. And there's a lot of software development in, th in this area. Um, there's a lot of potential for free software, especially in um, the field where you have disease symptoms and want to translate from disease symptoms to things your doctor can do to, to, to get you better. There are expert systems developed, statistical reasoning systems and so on. And it would be great if they are free software and open so that everybody can see why you get diagnosed with a certain disease and what you can do about it. 
Um, there's a food security, sustainable agriculture, and uh, bioeconomy track. That's more or less engineering kind of science. There's a track about secure, clean, and efficient energy. Uh, smart, green, and integrated transport. Again, with a lot of potential for free software. Uh, from, um, let's say, uh, open source mapping, uh, vehicle routing, identification of uh, traffic problems and so on. That can be done and is done already in, in a lot of free software projects. Then there's a climate action um, and resource efficiency uh, program. And Europe in a changing world, inclusive, innovative and reflective societies. Now that's EU speak, but that's a program where um, local communities can propose, um, let's say, community efforts to get a better society. And that is something where free software can play an, an important role. Also there's uh, secure societies, that's basically uh, security research, um, P2P software, uh, encryption and so on. And the last one is that is new in Horizon 2020 is an SME instrument. It's a uh, finance for small companies. So if you have a, an, an open source company, which has let's say between 10 and 50 uh, people working on, on open source, you can get special grants from the EU. And that is uh, quite easy to get this money. Now, um, I've got some examples from um, how you can um, use free software. Um, in a project, you can just use uh, the free software to, to, to do your research. For example, the Intergreen project uh, uses it. Last year, they had a presentation at, so at FOSTEM here. They use Web2PI, which is a, a Python web stack, to do vehicle monitoring and traffic monitoring. Also, in the AV building, this year there were two other projects. The confined projects about community networks. And there was a project about energy efficient compilation. They also got financing from the EU. Uh, what you also can do is, you can have a, an EU funded project to build or make free software. There is um, something called the interactive knowledge stack. It's a semantic web free software stack which is built they get uh, I think nearly uh, more than six and a half million euro funding and there's another example the active project um, they built semantic media wiki extensions and also get money for it <coughs> now if you look at these examples they're mainly re related to academic research there are also exceptions where companies get get money now, how do you actually get the funding? Um, if you write an application and you have never done it before, it's a nightmare. You have to read through hundreds of pages of documentation. You have these strange forms in Word and PDF and so on. You have to fill in and you have to follow the rules to the letter. If you have a, like a 20 page form and you um, omit a checkbox in your final application, it gets rejected automatically. So it's really um, a bit of, uh, you have to ver work very, very accurate. Um, but if you want to, to participate, you have to, f to be a legal entity, a legal or something. You just can't participate as a person. So if you have a new free software project, which maybe three or four people together started, you can't participate. You have to start a foundation, or you have to do it for your company, or you have to work at a university to, to, to get money. Yeah? Are there certain amounts of funding or people that have to be employed by an organization to meet these criteria? Um, I mean, if you are employed at a university, you can ask for the money through the university. Um, but you can also build a one-person company, and then you can ask for funding. But if you are on your own, you are not, in a legal sense, a legal entity. And that's the, the difference, basically. And I guess you have to exist all, almost three years or something? No, 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 no. no. There are no rules. 
frameworks where they asked accounting for at least uh, five or six years? That's for different EU programs. Okay. It depends on the EU program what kind of accounting rules okay. are valid. Now, the biggest problem for this free software project is where do you fit in? How do you do networking? How do you find partners? How do you find knowledge to apply? And how can you make a proposal work? How to do the administration? And actually, building the free for software or doing the research is not the most difficult problem for most people. Uh, in the whole Horizon 2020 program, there's no specific area for free software. Um, and the funding is based on problems people have and they want to get solved. They can use free software, they can use proprietary software, it doesn't matter for Horizon. It, you, you just have to solve a problem, that's it. Now, likely areas are ICT, obviously, security, data analysis, uh, spreading knowledge, dissemination. The EU wants people um, to know more about the EU projects, about Horizon projects. And if you say, I will do research in that and that area, and I will spread it to different countries with, in, inside the EU, you get extra money. And there are some speciality areas where the EU provides uh, funding. They are mostly research related, like G networks, bioinformatics, mathematical programming, and geophysical research. But there are a lot of more speciality areas. Now, if you want to do networking for such a project, um, most people don't know what, where to start. And I can advise you the best thing is just start with people you already know. Just mail everybody <laughs> and ask, can we maybe uh, build together an EU project? You can also look who is using your software. That's also a good source of project partners. And then there is an official EU partner search. Now, most people who use the official EU partner search are the people who couldn't find any other contact. And usually they are not the most competent partners. If you look at the uh, official EU partner search, you see a lot of, I mean, I incredible bad uh, uh, search uh, proposals. So mostly try to work with whom you know. Now, the thing is, if you write a proposal together, you need to trust with your partners. And that's very difficult to establish. Um, most partners, like universities or companies, they want to solve a problem. They don't want to use free software. So what you have to do is you have to position your free software as something people need to use, which enables them to <coughs> solve their research problem. Now. An example is uh, Semantic Media Wiki. It's used by quite some projects. It gives a good foundation to uh, start with semantic web te technologies. It's easy to use. And so it gets funding from different EU projects. If you write a proposal, what you have to do is, if you are a free software project, work together with experience organizations, work together with a university or larger company who has done applications before. If you are a first timer and do it yourself, it's nearly impossible to do. There are so many rules. Um, what I see quite often in projects is that um, some people come together, like five or six. They are from different universities, from different companies. One has a new idea and then they discuss about it and then the other people exclude the one with the idea and start their own project. So um, there's a lot of political wrangling going on, who is in the project, who is not in the project, because people want to uh, distribute the project over different countries in the EU, who gets which money, and so on, and so on. Um, now, if you apply, you must realize, I think, maybe like 20% of the projects get funded. And that's a very low number. And it's a lot of work to prepare a project. But a lot of projects which, which are proposed to the EU are substandard. 
they are so bad um, <coughs> I'm not surprised that they fall out now once you get the money you have to administer it and that's also a lot of bureaucratic hassle um, you must agree on intellectual property rules um, that means who owns the intellectual property of a project is it in the public do some companies own it does, does a university own it whatever you need an accountant for your project you need timekeeping every workday you need to log your time and that's also strange for the most open source projects and at the end of the project you need to write reports they're called deliverables in EU speak and that's that you prove is to prove that you have done the actual work now if you want to do open access in an EU project the EU recommends uh, Creative Commons licenses and there's a policy on research publications and on data <coughs> you produce during your project but there's no policy and there's nothing written down about free software how you can publish the free software and what the results of a software project will be so there are quite some EU projects which are based for example on uh, GPL software um, enhance it but never publish it because it gets not distributed and in the sense of free software that's wasted um, because there's no obligation to publish if you keep it within your consortium so if you are a free software project um, before you start the project you have to make sure that you are allowed and that you can publish the software now what can you expect from a horizon project if you do it you can expect a partner network you have to get you have to work together with partners in different EU countries you get some money it depends on the type of project if you are a university a company and so on between 40 and 100 percent of their project costs you get exposure and publicity for your project but lots of administrative hassle and that's really a downside now if you want more information you can go to the EU websites you can look at my site about the book I'm, I'm going to write it's not yet written so there's not a lot on, on there <laughs> or you can just ask me I think the ruler is wrong Europa.eu. Okay, probably I, I forgot that, yeah. Now, any questions? Yeah. How do you apply? <coughs> Sorry. How do you apply to your local governments or directly? You apply directly to the EU in Brussels. So it doesn't matter where your company is based on? No, it, it doesn't matter. The problem is, um, if you want to apply, you have to, to have a look in which area you want to apply. And the EU says, let's say, in April we open a call, they call it a call, for six months in this and this specific area. Then you can write a proposal for this call and you have to submit it within the time frame. After six months they start a different one and a different one. So you have to watch all the time which kind of different calls are open and closed and so on. I'm sorry, I have a question. Is there a requirement for the background of the company to have like already proven in some area or to already has uh, experience or you know, a background in these uh, projects? Mm. Or you can open a completely new company and directly apply? Well. You can... Only with a good project, if it's prepared administratively perfect, it will, let's say, have a good chance to win. Uh, okay, the question is, can you just start a company and apply? Yes. In principle, yes. In practice, nearly impossible. If you are starting a new company, you should work together with some established other company or university. Because if you are new to it, and you don't know how it works, you don't know how to write a good proposal, you don't know how to do the administration, how to get a special accountant, and so on. So. If you work together with experienced partners, you get the experience yourself. And it's never that you are just 
getting a loan for your own company finance. You always, always get finance for a group of companies or group of universities. So like three or six or whatever. Yeah? Uh, do all partners have to reside in the EU? No. Uh, you can have partners from any country, except maybe North Korea or something like that. <laughs> uh, the only thing is uh, the partners, if they are outside the EU, usually don't get any money. So if you work together with an American university, they can participate, but uh, they have to do it for free, basically. There are exceptions to this rule. Okay? If a company has any previous experience with the FP7 programs uh, for submitting some proposals and so on, it's easier to participate in Horizon 2020? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, um, the FP7 rules are a bit simplified for Horizon 2020, but still, if you have done FP7, the previous program before Horizon, you will know about the accounting. Mm -hmm. And that gives you a big advantage. Yeah. Uh, uh, are there any any sources? I mean, um, uh, is there, for example, any any help uh, to, to fill the forms with the paperwork? Are there maybe commercial services to help you filling it, or maybe there are some forums, or I don't know, some places? Yeah. Now there are two two main things. Um, you can have a look at the um, EU website with the EU here. <laughs> I think sure. um, that has a lot of documentation, but it's uh, some parts are really unreadable. Uh, there are a lot of commercial companies offering, we write a proposal for you and you give us just 20% of the money. Okay, yeah. um, I mean, for some projects it's, it's good to work together with a commercial consultant um, because they can really help you make a better proposal. But I won't recommend to work with this um, <coughs> consultants which say no cure, no pay. There are thousands of proposals and um, that's usually a very bad thing. But it's good to spend some money on having somebody editing your English, for example. Um, if you're not a native English speaker and you want to write a good readable proposal, it's very difficult. Yeah? How much money are we talking about normally? Ooh, uh, it's, it's, I mean, let's say between 50,000 and 10 million euros. It really depends on the on the on the on the program, on the size of your project, on on the call of the EU. So there's no general rule, but it's there's I think around fifty thousand is the minimum. I mean, if you just ask for five thousand euros, that they they won't bother. Yeah. Can you sketch project that you have been involved in personally? Yeah, um, I've been involved mostly in university projects that were about hydrological research. It's about <coughs> river flows, um, about um, water flowing through the ground. Um, but I don't know, what do you want to know about these projects? Yeah, maybe funding, uh, so how much funding did you get? Um, I mean, the projects I was involved in were at universities. There were consortia of different universities. And usually the funding was in the range of four to eight million euros. Yeah. Uh, usually not. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's a bit like. Um, hmm? Okay, they have have a call and say we want uh, projects on this and this area. A hundred consortia submit, and the best ones get selected. And usually, all of them get money. Um, what about the timeline for projects? Is there like a maximum length? No, it depends on the call. The, let's say the shortest length is a half a year, usually, and the longest one is like three to four years, so there usually. Are re renewals like every year, or is no, no, no. You, 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 you start with you get the funding approved, okay. but every year you have to submit a progress report, so they control it that you are actually doing some work. Uh, yeah. I've been involved in the FP6 programs and I wonder if there are some improvements in the, 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 the speed you get paid and, and 
after the completion of the project, is it already during the completion, together uh, with the deliverables, or do you have to wait the full completion to get funded and paid effectively? Um, it's faster than in FP6, okay. but it's still not immediate. Okay. So I think they, redu they want the payment now within 90 days, but they want it. I don't know that. Uh, yeah, but I don't know if they if they will really uh, will be able to do it in that but time frame. But you get some advanced payments. Yeah, yeah. That you can you can get advanced payments also. But it's not. Then these payments are not final. They want the final money within 90 days. So I don't know if they will. Uh, <laughs> Okay, yeah. Is there social sciences also in the horizon agenda? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in the, s uh, I don't know. Social challenges. Yeah, social challenges. Uh, <coughs> Europe in a changing world. Okay, innovative and reflective societies, for, for example. Uh, yeah. Sorry, we're over time, so uh, I just want to thank you. If people can stay, because there's the end of the room, so I just want to thank you and end the session. Sorry, I, I, I missed that, but uh, but anyway, if anyone is invited to stay, who wants to, but uh, I think we're gonna. Yeah, we